Alright, let's play the Everhood. It works interactive. And this time we're not gonna have. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's just creepy. <laughs> Clay, 
Send this letter to three friends or you will fall ill. Really do it. <laughs> We're wasting all the toilet paper. Dear Clayman, you read too much. Lily. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's toilet paper? Yeah. Clay friend, you read too darn much. Lily. <laughs> oh my god. Dear Clay, at first this was fun, but now you're being a baby. From Lily. Okay, oh. let's stop! How are we being a baby? <laughs> we we don't want to do our quest. Hello, still no man from Willie. <laughs> let's see. How much mail do you get? Greetings again. If you throw this away, I'll think less of you. Willie. <laughs> <laughs>
point where you need to run inside. So look at James. Look for a Jack in the Box. Like that one. All the, the tree with the fruits. Oh, I remember that from the other day. Eating. Oh, don't eat too much. You're gonna fart. Don't eat too much. You're gonna fart. <laughs> Do you remember the beans from the other game? Okay. Oh, I remember that they were eating sandwiches. Ha <laughs> 
you have to move that. You have to move that one to the other. No. I remember this puzzle. Everybody way, everybody way now, everybody way. Oh my god, that sounds <laughs> ridiculous, Rob. Everybody way now. <laughs> everybody way, everybody way, everybody eat somebody's free. Right. It's just you no, know, like that, and that's supposed to be there. That's supposed to be down there. Okay, this puzzle makes no sense. <laughs> I have an H right here. It's just this thing needs to be in the middle. But um. that should count, though. I kill you. More like you're killing me, Dave. This is a, a, a nine piece block puzzle. This is the easiest type of sliding block puzzle. I should be able to get this. I know! And it's so maddening! Duh! You know what? Got it. It's just this piece is up here. Uh. Imagine if there was a special ability where you could warp the pieces. Imagine if there was a help button. <gasps> Maybe there's a hidden help button that can solve it for you. Wait, okay, I almost got it. Ah! Uh, I got it. I got it. All right. All right. Now we're in. Now we're in. Finally. Now let's watch something on whatever this is. It looks ridiculous. Looks like we need to shrink down. Ooh. Is that what it was for? So it looks like we're missing the other discs. We gotta find the other discs. And here's one right here. And then put it in! Oh my god! Alright. Calm down. It's alright. Oh, 
Oh, why, why did I find this disc and not this disc? So now I gotta go out of order. He to. He make a world full of beauty and wonder. This world, the neverhood, a world where he could live forever and ever more. All right, you gotta find more. Spaceship. Press uh, the green button and it will probably illuminate. Oh, yeah, turn the lights on. Oh, look. There's that guy in the video. Yeah, we, we, we forgot the disc because we couldn't get it. Does that look like a bird donut? Ew, spikes. Ew, 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 ew. The Neverhood Chronicles. Oh, try to try to walk into the spikes. I want to see what happens. Um, uh -huh. uh, yeah. <gasps> What's that thing? That tube. It's like a tube. Tube. Ah. Uh, what is? What is? What is it? <gasps> Go in. Am I gonna get stabbed? Another disc. A disc. Imagine, imagine if we got all the discs, except for that wretched third disc. Mm, there's another button. Oh. Oh, that's not a good noise. That's a better noise. Interesting. That's what we have to do, I think. We have to do something like that, maybe. You gotta shoot a robot with a cannon? Yeah! Okay. Let's shoot a robot with a cannon. I am Quater. Read my words and be my friend. Father commands me to record the truth of history so that readers will learn from those who went before. Therefore I give each of my seven sons one of these self engraving history recording clay walls. This wall automatically records the activity in this world, and in any other world containing one of the other walls. Behold, anyone who tampers with the records on these walls will be considered the enemy of Father. I will not like you much either. This wall is given by Father. It will teach you to acquire wisdom. Next. Integrity and skills for solving problems. In each of our lives we must make decisions. When these times come, be ready to make the right choices. Continue in what you know is true. Though truth is often hard to see, these walls may hold the only truth you will know. The only truths you will know. Quater. Alright, let's start reading the Neverhood Chronicles. I wonder what this is. It's a world? The world? Maybe that's the world. I don't know. Father, let's throw this down. That's a... Alright, here's the story of Father. Father is a kind being whom no one has ever seen. Father is beyond our comprehension. All folks know is that he was here before there ever was a here. He is happy and enjoys existing. 
He is said to be great and powerful, and as far as anyone knows, there was no one before him. He is from the other side. No one has ever been to the other side, but it is supposed to be a great place where there is peace without death. I don't know about that. I don't think that's where he's from. Quater is the only being Father has ever made. He has been a good friend of Father's for many eons. Quater is the official go-between for all beings in Father. Since he himself is a being made by Father, not much be can be learned about Father by looking at Quater. But if anything is known to anyone about Father, Quater revealed it. Quater forged seven crowns for seven beings he created for Father to pour his approval on. Quater left the comfort of Father's presence to pioneer a new world where his beings could make their own place in order to empathize with Quater. Okay. So Quater's like the creator of all the, the worlds, I guess, but Father is the one that created Quater. Agadilla. Quater made Agadilla as a kind of test subject. He gave Agadilla a crown, although he did not have a head to set the crown on. Agadilla is a mass of blue gas that is barely self-aware. It is said that Agadilla is the spirit of adventure, since on the day he was made, he left Quater's homeland, traveling in a straight line without stopping. He has picked up many particles from space which have made a happy home for themselves on Agadilla's back. Agadilla is now one million times the size he was when Quater made him, and his inhabitants include the specks of Rylanate. <laughs> so he's just traveling in a straight line, just a ball of gas. The specks of Rylanate were in constant conflict with the specks of Rod. The specks of Rod cultivate food on Agdilla's back using their own spit. The specks of Rylanate had no spit, but occupied most of the surface of Agdilla. The specks of Rylanate were disgusted by all the spitting that the specks of Rod did, and they did not like stepping in it any either. <laughs> Ugh. The strife between the specks of Rylanate and the specks of Rod carried on for centuries. The conflict was never physically violent, but there was much whining, taunting, heated sneering, upheavals, and so on. This period is known as the Ubla Sancter Hacht, Hacht, or, hmm, I guess the Hacht, because they're, they're, they're Hacking a Lugi. The Three Millennia Conflict, although it was really more like two and a half. During the Ubla Sancter Hacht, an incident happened that at once made all the specks forget their animosity, and at the same time exasperated the conflict even more. In the eighth month, on the twenty-seventh day, during the eleventh year of the first century of the second millennium of the Ubla Sector Hacht, the specks of Rylanate woke up to find a strange being of gigantic size asleep in a scrunchy park. Oh, I'm sorry. A strange being of gigantic size asleep in Scrinchy Park. There was a pond by his head where he had drooled while he slept. A crowd of specks gathered around the Titan as the... Gathered. Morning hours went by. The larger the crowd grew, the more the specks talked among themselves. The hubbub finally became so loud that the giant awoke and sat up. The giant showed his great teeth and growled at them from deep within his huge body. The specks fed him for fear of being eaten alive. The giant could easily have thrown three or four of them into his mouth at once. He was very bizarre looking, even for a giant. He was like nothing they had ever seen before. His head had a ring of flesh on it that started almost at the very top, then looped down and joined the head again at the jaw. Three specks, one on top of the other, could have stood up. Wait. He had a... His head 
had a ring of flesh on it that started almost at the very top, then looped down and joined the head again at the jaw. Hmm. Who Hi. has a loop on their head? Three? Willy. Is that Willie? But it joins it at... I don't know if his loop joins it at the jaw, though. I know he... It doesn't. It, it just goes up and then loop. Yeah, yeah, maybe that's someone else. Three specks, one on top of the other, could have stood up inside the ring. He had huge lips with which he covered with his enormous teeth, while the specks had no lips at all. Above the lips, almost to the top of the face, were two ball-shaped things that had one dot w within each of them. The giant Eyes. Yeah. The giant seemed to use them to observe things, since the dots moved and pointed at whoever was speaking to him. His torso was short for his size, while his legs were extremely long. Out of his chest stuck three spiked horns. For days upon end, the specks tried to speak to the giant to find out if he was friend or foe, to no avail. What's a foe? A foe is like, I guess, an enemy. His form of speech sounded too low down, deep, and loud. It reminded them too much of the rumbling growl that came from deep within his body. The specks did not like it, and they did not understand it. They could not even tell where one syllable ended and the next began, and comprehending sentences was totally impossible. To avoid hearing him speak, the specks fed him constantly. The specks of Rylanate did not keep a guard posted where the giant was staying. They could never have overpowered him. In any case, the giant never threatened them. King Rylanate had in mind to win over the giant's confidence so that he might be employed to stomp on the specks of Rod. King Rylanate often went to... Them. Scrunchy Park to speak to the giant. He wanted to impress the giant, so he had the best acrobats from the Rylanate Circus come visit him. The king commanded the unicyclist to do loop-the-loops inside the ring on the giant's head, while a high diver did tr trick dives off his huge lips into the barrel of water at the giant's feet. During these demonstrations of the circus performer's expertise, the giant did nothing but stand still and smile. Even while there were trapeze artists swinging from the three spikes that stuck out from his chest, the giant stood like a stone sculpture with a silly grin on his face. King Rylanate redoubled his efforts to continue to try. to communicate with the giant once he saw that the giant would not harm the circus performers as they climbed and swung upon his body. Day after day, the king came out to where the giant was to try again to communicate his desire for the giant to walk over and stomp on the specks of Rod. The giant smiled a lot at the king. He nodded his head when the king nodded his head. He shook his head when the king shook his head. When King Rylanate slapped his own forehead, the giant slapped his own forehead. When the king mimed walking and pointed in the direction of the kingdom of Rod, the giant stood up and did a dance. King Rylanate was furious. While the giant was still dancing, the king ordered all the specks of Rylanate to throw things at him. Since they were feeding the giant all the time, the only stuff they had at hand was food, so they threw that at him. The giant tried to eat as much of the food thrown at him as possible, but he could not keep up with the furious pace with which the specks were throwing it at him. He turned and walked away from them and headed in the direction of the kingdom of Rod. Since the specks of Rylanate had thrown so much food at the giant, no matter where he turned and he stepped, no matter where he turned, he stepped into it. With each step, more and more food gunked up on the bottom of his feet. The specks of Rylanate cheered and clapped and jumped up and down when the giant continued in the direction of Rod. The giant turned back to look at the specks, so they stopped their cheering and got ready to throw more food. But the giant did not come back. He continued on the way as uh, on the way he had he was headed toward the kingdom of Rod. So the specks of Rylanate had a great celebration. 
they hoped that as soon as the giant arrived in the kingdom of Rod, he would smush the specks of Rod, who were such a bother to the kingdom of Rylanate. King Rylanate gave a rousing speech. Well, that's that for the great giant. I suppose we owe a debt of thanks to the goofy Colossus, for he will shortly be stepping on the specks of Rod and making so much mush of them. His immense foot will crush our ancient foe in an instant. Squashed beneath his mammoth bulk, those unspeakable wretches will be reduced to the vile scum that they have always represented. We are now delivered forever from their constant whining, taunting, and hectoring. That feeble-minded titan is our national hero, a doltish whopper. He shall be the greatest of all figures in the history of Rylanate. Um. There is none equal to his block-headed enormity on all of Ogdilla, but he did finally come through for us, a stupendously dumb gargantua. It is well, nevertheless, that we are rid of him, and I suppose we ought to be thankful that the half-witted behemoth did not stomp on us too. I cannot think of any reason why he would come back here. Can you? Meanwhile, the specks of Rod heard the giant before they saw him. His every step made a hollow drum sound on the debris-covered surface of Ogdilla. They gathered into frightened groups, becoming more and more agitated as the booming steps grew ever louder. Finally they saw him. They saw his big ring head, his big lips, and the spikes sticking out of his chest. But what most impressed them were his feet. Actually, what most impressed them was what they saw stuck to the bottom of his feet. All that food that he had stepped on looked disgusting, but the specks of Rod did not know that it was food. The specks stood in stunned silence. They knew that the giant had come from the direction of the kingdom of Rylanate. Their imaginations took over from there. The specks of Rod were convinced that the giant had stomped on the specks of... I'm sorry, the specks of Rod were convinced that the giant had stomped on the specks of Rylanate and made mush of them. As the giant got closer and closer, word went through the crowd that the giant had finished off the specks of Rylanate and was now coming to their kingdom to stomp on them. Some of the specks ran away screaming, but most stood still, knowing they could not outrun the fearsome giant's feet. Then one speck of rod started clapping. At first the specks next to him thought he was crazy, but then they started clapping too. Soon a small group was clapping. Then most of the crowd was clapping and cheering and jumping up and down as the giant approached. They had figured that if the giant thought they were glad that the specks of Rylanate had been stomped to pudding. And they had figured that if the giant thought they were glad the specks of Rylanate had been stomped to pudding, Let's see here. Oh my god, this is long. Then he might spare them and consent to be their hero. When the giant reached the front of the crowd, they whooped and hollered for a few minutes more. Then the crowd parted, and King Rod made his way through to the front. There before his people at the giant's feet, he made a speech. Oh, great giant, thank you, mighty colossal allied thing, for stepping on the specks of Rylanate and making so much mush of them. Your immense foot has crushed our ancient foe in an instant. Squashed beneath your mammoth bulk, these unspeakable hideots, hideous idiots, have been reduced to the evil scum they have always... Seems ...represented. We are now delivered forever from their constant whining, taunting, and bantering. You, magnificent titan, are our national hero. Oh, necromaniacal whopper, you shall be the greatest of all figures in the history of Rod. There is none equal to your fabulous enormity on all of Ogdilla. You, tremendous gargantua, shall be second only to myself. Unless, of course, you would rather be number one. By the way, we thank you, phenomenal behemoth, so very much for not stomping on us, too. I can only offer our humble kingdom to you, amazing monstrosity, as compensation for the wonderful deed you have accomplished today. It is... 
Not actually what he did. Not a kingdom worthy of your monumental grandiosity, of course. You won't like it much. You will probably not like anything we offer you, since it is all tiny compared to your gigantian size. But of course anything we have is yours. But I don't know what you would do with it. I say, do you understand me? The giant smiled at the specks of Rod, who smiled back until he spoke to them. To the specks his voice sounded slow and deep and slurred. They looked at each other and shrugged their shoulders. The specks of Rod decided to go back to what they were each doing before the giant arrived. As they left, they kept looking over their shoulders to make sure the giant was not lifting one of his big feet to stomp on them. He did not move from where he stood and maintained his smile until they were out of sight. The next day the giant was right where the specks of Rod had left him, only he was sitting, so the specks went about their daily chores and occasionally they would look over their shoulders at the giant just to make sure he had not stood up. This did not change for several days. Finally the giant got up and started following some specks around. He seemed to be watching them as they went. about their everyday tasks. He still smiled as he watched them, but not as much. Day after day, month after month, season after season, he watched them tending their fields, from planting to harvest. At harvest time, many specks noticed how much thinner the giant looked and how little he smiled as compared to when he had first arrived in the kingdom of Rod. As they talked about it, they realized no one had seen him eat while he had been there. Some of the specks got together and brought food to the giant. When he saw that they had brought some food to him, the giant looked horrified. He got up and ran off, far away from the kingdom of Rod and Rylanate. There is no official record of when the giant was seen last or who saw him, but a few specks from both kingdoms mm. insist that they saw the giant ascending into the heavens early one morning, a few years after mm -hmm. he ran away from the kingdom of Rod. What's up? Mm. Just singing? Mm. About the time... <laughs> it's a catchy song! Oh. About the time that the giant ran off, spies from the kingdom of Rylanate came to the kingdom of Rod and saw that the specks of Rod were not obliterated. They noticed that their enemies were not even bruised a little. This report went back to, the king, to king Rylanate, who was shocked and upset that once again... The specks of Rod had foiled his own speck kingdom. He ordered a delegation to go to the kingdom of Rod and meet with a delegation of the specks of Rod. When the delegation of Rylanate arrived at Rod, there was much shock and agitation. You are supposed to be squashed, said the representative of Rylanate. Well, you are supposed to be squished, said the representative of Rod. Tensions rose and accusations flew. Each side blamed the other for making their king's most famous speech a pack of lies. The delegations gave messages to each other to take back to their respective kings about how... <coughs> oh. How there could never be peace between the two kingdoms. As they left the meeting, they all thumbed their noses at each other. The Ubla Sancta Hacht! was back in full swing. King Rylanate grew tired of the thousands of years of bickering between his specks and King Rod's specks. In a desperate move to bring about a day of peace, he asked for a secret meeting with King Rod at the center of Ogdilla. In the thirty-fourth month on the second day, during the eighty-ninth year of the fifth century of the third millennium of the Ubla Sancter Hacht, the king's mech, Two kings reasoned for two weeks, trying solutions that were fair for both kingdoms, but to no avail. Meanwhile, Ogdilla himself had grown so tired of the angst, he f felt on his back that he spread all of the specks of Rod to one half of his back, and the specks of Rylanate on the other half of his back. In a violent quake, Ogdilla split into two beings, which floated independently from each other. The only problem was that King Rod ended up on the half of the back with the specks of Rylanate, and King Rylanate found himself on the half of Ogdilla with the specks of Rod. 
King Rylanate was at first mistaken by the Specs of Rod as King Rod, but quickly corrected the Specs of Rod. Uh-oh. Announcing that he was King Rylanate, the Specs of Rod immediately cut him into tiny pieces and fed him to their young. King Rod, however, told the Specs of Rylanate that he was indeed their king, and since few Specs of Rylanate had ever seen their own king, they believed him. Eventually, King Rod had the Specs of Rylanate build him a large castle, which housed his children, which were half Speck of Rod and half Speck of Rylanate. King Rod, posing as King Rylanate, lived to see his Specs harmoniously blend where it was previously thought impossible. The Specs of Rylanate did not cultivate food on Agadilla's back using their own spit like the Specs of Rod. Instead, they rubbed their heads on the fine, hairy, grass-like particles that had attached themselves to cover the Rylanate portion of Agadilla's back. The rubbing caused static charges to build and build until small arcs of lightning flashed off the Specs heads. Agdilla's blue glass uh, blue gas in the immediate area of the arcs of lightning reacted by turning into bite sized cubes of lime flavored finger snacks. This was the sole source of food for the Specs of Rylanate. Every two hundred and forty seven days this was one year for the Specs of Rylanate chosen arbitrarily because they did not have seasons the specs had their annual feast mm -hmm. which was called the phalange perjungi the this is so much random <laughs> the great day began with the concert of rubbing where the entire population of rylanate young and old alike rubbed their heads on the hairy particles until they collapsed exhausted unable to lift a limb. About three hours after this frenzy, some specks regained enough strength to shakingly pull themselves upright. Then the male specks began the harvest of cubes, while the female specks prepared gastronomic delights such as cube fondue, cube salad, cube roast, cube soup, cube and cube on a stick for the kids, cube paste, cube nothing. Filet, cube pie, cube relish, cube stuffing, blackened cube, cube kebabs, cube sherbet, deep fat fried cube, cube cake, deep fat fried cube cake, barbecued cube, cube chowder, glazed cube, cube pandowdy, broiled cube, blackened cube, cube thermidor, cube, cube on the rocks, cube for the adults, steamed cube, cube. smoked cube, and, of course, Susan's Cube Bubble Loaf. While the delicious smells of cube cookery were fill, filling the air, those who were not busy found time to particip participate in the fun Phalange Perjungi games, like, Come over here. Hey, you just bumped my friend's elbow. Are you just going to stand there, and this is my bucket? Sounds the like boring games. This day culminated with the Phalange Perjungi dance, which they performed lying on their backs, with their feet as high in the air as they could possibly get them, first prize going to their dancers with their feet highest up. King Rod, whom the Specs of Rylanate thought was King Rylanate, used the occasion of Phalange Perjungi to campaign for the re-election, uh, for re-election, since twelve days after the picnic was polling day. The Specs voted every year, but they only had two choices, King Rod Cream Ballot or King Rod Purple Ballot. Oh, Ballot. I don't know why I'm saying that. Uh, King Rod Green Ballot or King Rod Purple Ballot. What? Either way, King Rod got the re got reelected. So he was basically on both ballots, so he would win no matter what. What's purple and what's green? What's the difference? It doesn't really matter, because... Because he was he was up for re-election, but he was on both ballots, so either way he would get re-elected. Oh, that must be him, Agdilla. Phalange Perjungi was the specks of Rylanate forgotten day of atonement. They knew that in their past there was a definite day set aside as a day of atonement, but it was forgotten before King Rod ever took over the position of King Rylanate. At least they knew there was a there was there once was a day of atonement, 
but the Specs could not remember what they need atonement for. After King Rod took the throne, a Speck named Hefamut, during the demolition of a shoe foundry, found a vague historical reference to a Day of Atonement called the Phalange Perjungi. The king's advisors advised the king to declare a new Phalange Perjungi and to have the marketing department think of some fun things to do on it. No one could think of anything they needed atonement for, so the day is mostly remembered for the annual feast for the dancing thing. The specks of Rylanate determined when one day was over and a new day had begun by having the day determiner hold the determiner stone out at her side at arm's length. When that day's day determiner could no longer hold her arm up, the day was declared done and the next day determiner took up the stone. Being day determiner was a prestigious honor, but no she-speck was allowed to do it more than once a year. Rylanate specks married in threes, two grooms and a bride, or two brides and a groom. In either case, the spouse with the two counter spouses had to alternate every day, being spouse to one and then the next day to the other. Each speck year, the sequence is renewed, starting with the spouse who was shorted by one day the previous year. The marriage ceremony of Rylanate was short and simple. The three specks went before the king on the assigned day of their marriage appointment. Each stated their vows, which consisted only of a promise to abide by the custom of spouse alternating, and a promise to never get ugly. The vows were repeated in this way. The king said to each speck in turn, Do you blank promise to never get ugly? To which each responded in turn, I do. Then in the case of one groom and two brides, for example, the king said to the groom speck, Repeat after me, I blank, take you blank, to be one of my wedded wives, and you blank, to be the other of my wedded wives. Annulment usually stemmed from one of the two brides or one of the two grooms, in the case of one bride and two grooms, feeling slighted because he, she, was not the first one named in the vow. Divorce usually stemmed from one spouse being cheated out of his or her fair share of marriage days on leap year when an extra day went to the spouse who then renewed the New Year's sequence. Okay. So that's, uh, yeah, I guess this is, this ball of gas is Agdilla, and there's the crown. Click on it. Oh, follow the line. I wonder. Bert, Bert. 